Cookies have been used in web development since 1994. They are tiny pieces of data that the backend can use to store in the user's browser. Typically, it is used to track users' activities, personalization, and session management. They were once used for general client-side storage, but are no longer considered the recommended way since the introduction of the Web Storage API and IndexedDB. In this video, we'll be focusing on the technical side of using cookies in your JavaScript applications. More specifically, we'll be creating, using, and manipulating cookies in an Express server. It is possible to create cookies in the browser with document.cookie, but most of the time it is a responsibility of the backend. The server uses a set cookie header with a string made out of key value pair plus any additional attributes. The client will then take these values, store them, and send them alongside any future requests. We can create a simple application in Express to demonstrate how to do this. Most frameworks will have their own utility functions for making it easier to manipulate cookies. In Express, we can use the cookie parser library, which will simply read cookies on request and convert them into a JavaScript object. We can set cookies by simply using the request.cookie function. Once we visit the site, we can see these cookies by calling document.cookie in Java or in the development tools storage tab under cookies. You will also notice that the response from Express Server contains a set cookie header. This could have a number of applications. For example, on the first request, the backend gives a browser a user ID cookie. Now on every subsequent call, the backend can properly identify the user by looking up the ID attached to each request. But with this come some caveats. You could use cross-site scripting to gain access to someone's cookies. This would then allow you to log in and authenticate as them. Attributes could be added to cookies to make them more or sometimes less secure. The HTTP only attribute ensures that a cookie is not accessible by JavaScript code. This is the most important form of protection against cross-scripting attacks. We can check this by setting a cookie as HTTP only and using the console to check if it has access to reading it. Whenever possible, you should always enable this, unless there's a specific reason for exposing the cookies at runtime to JavaScript. There is also a secure attribute in which the browser will reject cookies unless the connection happens over HTTPS. Don't get fooled by the name of this attribute, as there is no protection for the cookie once it lands in the user's browser. Unlike the name implies, cookies are not intended for transmitting sensitive data. The last attribute we'll be taking a look at is same site. This was introduced to improve cookie security and avoid privacy leaks. Adding same site attribute to a cookie provides three different behaviors to control it. The default mode used to be none, which would allow third parties to track users across sites. But now, if no value is set, the default is lax, meaning a cookie is only set when the domain in the URL of the browser matches the domain of the cookie. Any cookie with same site set to none must also include a secure flag, meaning it will only be created and sent through requests made over HTTPS. Lastly is strict, which restricts cross-site sharing even between different domains that are owned by the same publisher. There are other properties you can set on cookies, but they are mostly self-explanatory. You can find more information in the description below, but for all intended uses, cookies can expose users to attacks and vulnerabilities, so be aware and do your research before using them. Thank you for watching. If you are new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Hope to see you in the next one.